Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Tuesday, February 21st, 2023. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you are part of my life as well. Well, I'm sorry I'm getting this out a little bit later than normal. Um, scheduling was challenging uh, today. But um, yeah, uh, yesterday was President's Day. The office was closed. We were off yesterday, so praise God for that. It was very good. Today, uh, the February 21st, is Chaz Carrington's birthday. Happy birthday, Chaz. We're praying for you today. We pray that uh, God blesses you in every way, that you know that you are loved by your family and friends, and that you are loved by Jesus as well. <clears throat> um, so happy birthday, Chaz. Uh, yeah, I preached on Sunday about tithing. It's part of the Ask Me Anything series. Uh, someone asked, what does the New Testament say about tithing? And of course, the answer to that is very, very little. Um, but the New Testament says a lot about giving. And so we talked about, we went through all the passages that the New Testament has about tithing. We talked about what tithing is in the Old Testament. And we talked about what the New Testament overview sort of says about giving. And I mentioned that there was this passage that was really uh, mind-bending, <laughs> uh, Luke chapter 16, and uh, I said that I would be doing my daily devotions about it this week, and here it is. Uh, this is a very difficult passage, a very interesting passage. We're going to spend all four days uh, of devotional videos this week uh, looking at them, looking at it. It's uh, it is a it's a head scratcher. So uh, today we're just going to do kind of an overview of the passage, and then the next three days we'll dig into it in more detail. So here it comes. Ready? Are you ready? <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, what is this that I hear about you? Turn in the account of your management for you can no longer be manager. And the manager said to himself, what shall I do since my master is taking the management away from me? I am not strong enough to dig and I am ashamed to beg. I've decided what to do so that when I'm removed from management, people may receive me into their houses. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he said to the first, how much do you owe my master? He said, a hundred measures of oil. He said to him, take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50. Then he said to another, and how much do you owe? He said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and write 80. The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Oh, I need to uh, go here. Okay. Um, yeah, that's odd, isn't it? Odd passage. Um, there's a whole lot of strange in this passage, and it's going to take us a while to unpack it all. But um, just some highlights, right? Here is Jesus telling a parable about a bad guy, right? Uh, this guy is a crook. <laughs> And um, he's supposed to be managing the, the wealth of uh, his, his master. Um, and it is staggering wealth. Uh, the, the amounts that these people owe his master, uh, measures of oil or measures of wheat, uh, you know, 100 measures uh, of oil, 100 measures of wheat, um, 100 measures of oil, is, it's, that's industrial quantities of oil. That's not, you know, nobody uses a hundred measures of oil in their home. Um, same thing with wheat. Uh, the manager is some sort of, the master is some sort of wholesaler or something like that. 
uh, because the quantities here, we're talking, you know, truckloads of oil and truckloads of wheat uh, that are being uh, owed here. And, and of course, the implication is that there weren't just two debtors, there were many. And so the, the, uh, the dishonest manager called them all in. And basically, um, he basically uh, cheated his master out of what he was genuinely owed. Uh, the shrewd manager was a bad guy. And we're supposed to sort of learn a lesson from this bad guy. Um, because uh, what Jesus says is that the, the, the master commended the manager for his shrewdness. Uh, the manager was um, unwilling to get a, a, a physical labor job. Um, he would, did not want to be uh, a beggar. And so instead he cheated his master uh, in hopes that the people that he uh, forgave their debts would be kind to him uh, after he's fired. Um, he is a dishonest manager. The, ma the master says, let's come and settle, settle accounts. And when uh, the master was going to look into his accounts, uh, of course, the, the manager believed that he would be found guilty. That's why he was doing what he was doing. So um, he was not a good manager, not an honest manager. He was mismanaging his master's resources. And yet um, he was able to use his master's resources in such a way that he would uh, receive commendation and receive perhaps welcome into the homes of his uh, of his debtors. This is a bizarre thing, right? How many times does Jesus use a parable of a dishonest person and use that as uh, as kind of a, an example for us? Um, the other thing is, of course, the use of the, the phrase unrighteous wealth, uh, which is uh, a, just a bizarre thing. Uh, let's go back here, right? He says, uh, not here in the first slide, but not in the second slide, but the third slide, right? The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness. Um, he says, make friends for yourself by means of unrighteous wealth so that when it fails, they, who's they, may receive you into the eternal dwellings. Um, and then in uh, the next slide here, uh, if, if you've not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust you the true riches? Um, no man can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and money. Where it says money there, where it says unrighteous wealth on this slide and the previous slide, um, it's using the Greek word mammon, which means money or wealth, but it, it, it's, a, it's a personification of money or wealth, right? Um, it's, it's, it's treating it like a person, treating it like an entity. Uh, and in fact, uh, it was considered to be sort of a demonic um, hold, stranglehold that money had on people um, back in the old days, back when people were controlled by their wealth, right? <laughs> uh, it, it's, an, it's virtually an idol. It's, it's, it's being given a, a name sort of like an idol would be. So Jesus is uh, talking about idolatry, the idolatry of money, and he tells us to make friends for ourselves by means of mammon. And then uh, he says, if you've not been faithful in mammon, who will trust you true riches? No one can serve two masters. You cannot serve both God and mammon. Uh, if, if mammon is an idol, how can we be faithful in the use of this idol? If it's dangerous, if it's unrighteous, what does it mean to be faithful in it and to use it to uh, acquire welcome in eternal dwellings? Ah, this is a really bizarre passage and uh, the mysteries of it are deep. So we'll, we'll be going through it over the course of the next few days. What's your takeaway for today? I just wanna take away this, um, just simply for today. Notice that Jesus is contrasting two forms of wealth. There is what he calls unrighteous wealth or mammon and what he calls true riches, right? Uh, and true riches is somehow connected with serving God and unrighteous wealth is connected with serving mammon. 
Um, and I think that's a key point for us to remember. This, this distinction that Jesus draws, he says, you cannot serve both God and money. You have to be serving one or the other. You can't serve both. You can't uh, have a life that is serving mammon Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then serve God Sunday. There's no way to do that. Um, your heart, at where your heart is, uh, where, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Um, so what you treasure, where, where you serve, um, that affects your heart and it affects your, your eternal destiny. Um, you cannot serve both. Don't try. It's impossible. Um, many have tried. Countless have tried. Uh, and all have testified that you can't serve both ultimately. Either you'll love the one and hate the other, or you'll hate the one and love the other. You can't ultimately serve them both. Um, and uh, this is this is the dichotomy. This is the, the choice that Jesus puts before us. Either serve God or serve money, but you can't serve both. You got to choose. And if you choose to serve God, it means treating money in a particular way. And we'll, we'll talk about that in the days to come. But, um, but you cannot allow money to be your master if you're serving God. Um, I think also I'll just say this a little bit, and that is that if Jesus is warning about this, it must be a powerful temptation that we need to keep in our minds, right? We need to keep in mind that that serving God and money is going to be a temptation that we'll have. And we need to guard against it, right? So that's that's the takeaway for today, is, is that, that there's a stark contrast between two ways, two kinds of wealth and two kinds of service that are connected with it. And we'll talk more about that in the days to come. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you that in your love for us, you call us away from service of money. Not because you hate us, not because you want bad things for us, but because you love us and you want good things for us, that you call us to not serve money. Lord, I pray that you would help us this week to understand this more and to dig into this more. I pray that you'd help us to see the areas in which, in our hearts, in which money has a hold and help us to pry its fingers loose and uh, serve you and you alone. Lord, I pray your blessing on Chaz Carrington today. Please bless him and encourage him. Strengthen him in every way on his birthday. May he know that he is loved by you and by your people. In Jesus' name, Lord, please bless everyone in the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.